Hello guys, uh, Richard here, back with some more I Ching Oracle of the Cosmic Way. Now we finished the uh, you know main text of the 64 hexagrams and discussed their cosmic meanings and all of that. Now I'm going to start going into the uh, appendix, um, which is a glossary of cosmic terms and words created by the collective ego. If you've been following this series, you know how important words are, especially the false use of words, the false use of languages in creating the parallel reality that uh, most of us are living in right now. Um, so I'm going to go through this section, uh, take a few terms at a time. I think that's probably the simplest way to do it. Um, maybe a couple of pages per video um, and, uh, you know, give some commentary here and there on the terms, uh, clarify anything that uh, you know has been made clear already or if you're just tuning in to these videos uh, you know and didn't watch the hexagram series um, you know this is still be very valuable to you because many of these words are very 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 commonly used words that are ingratiated into our belief systems and that may have a inappropriate uh, meaning or um, maybe false words altogether um, so this appendix for me has been very helpful to clarify uh, a lot of the main text, um, and you can check you can check into this uh, while you're going through the main text of the hexagrams uh, to get more clarification. So, with that said, let's begin with the first term we have here, which is animal nature, which is a word that's used very fre frequently in the hexagrams. So, let's see here: animal nature in the cosmic sense humans are part of the animal kingdom. It is our animal nature that gives us our cosmic, dig cosmic dignity and connects us through our inner senses and feelings with the cosmos. The human desire to be special because we have language, however, has led to the idea that our self is divided into a higher and a lower nature, the latter being our animal nature. The term animal nature is often used as a synonym for bodily nature, but has in particular been connected with our sexuality. The slanders that have been put on our sexuality and on our animal nature as a whole by calling it lower or viewing it as the source of evil and the re reason for original sin and guilt are the subject of many hexagrams because they are the first cause for human separation from the cosmic unity, slandering our animal nature, the body the body, the bodily nature. The I Ching shows that every person can reunite with the cosmos by removing the slanders put on his animal nature. So it's funny that, you know, a lot of the spiritual traditions, um, uh, you know, have this idea that we are divided into a higher spiritual soul type being and a lower bodily nature, our body here on earth. Um, well, actually, that belief in and of itself is causing people who believe that to separate from the cosmic unity. So, uh, you know, they're actually, you know, hurting themselves by, by believing that. It's the opposite of what they're going for. You see what I'm saying? All right. Um, burnout. Burnout refers to the exhaustion of a diluted enthusiasm. Diluted enthusiasm. The person follows that enthusiasm with ever increasing frustration until it simply can be followed no more. What burns out is the person's will to continue on that path. Burnout is a corrective function built into the will that finally saves a person from the exhaustion of his chi energy. If he were to go on with that belief, which uh, you know a lot of beliefs are in fact deluded enthusiasms, um, a person will exa eventually exhaust their chi energy. But thankfully, we have this burnout that uh, simply tells a person that, hey, you can't go on with this anymore, you know, no matter what. It's just impossible. You can't do it. That, you know, that's a sign from the cosmos that you've been following a wrong path, that you've been following a diluted enthusiasm, which is something you get, can get really excited, really carried away about. But... Uh, it's based on delusion. It's based on a false idea, false premise. Therefore, it's not true. Therefore, it's going to possibly sap your chi energy from you. 
chance, chance in the sense of random chance has no place in the cosmic order. Wow. It is a term that describes what happens when a person has lost his cosmic protection. It thus also describes the parallel reality created by the collective ego. Chance as a vagary implies what the I Ching calls fate. Fate itself, however, is not delimited as a vagary that strikes randomly. It is an automatic reaction of the cosmos to a continuous violation of the cosmic harmonics is always specific to what is needed to open a person up to the possibility of correcting the mistaken ideas and beliefs that have created his fate. So there's no such thing as, you know, uh, random chance as, as uh, chance, uh, chance fate, you know, it just happened to me. No, it happened to you because of a specific reason and is there for a specific purpose. Everything, everything, everything in your life is there for a specific purpose. Chance, in the sense of good luck, also belongs in the parallel reality. The terms good fortune and success in the I Ching do not refer to good luck, but to cosmic gifts and blessings and to the prospective success of an undertaking when the helpers have been included. And if you've read the text, if you've read some of the hexagrams, you know how important the helpers are to everything we do. Um, we're rather helpless without them. In fact, and uh, you know, the helpers again, if you're just tuning in, are these invisible beings, these invisible helping aspects of the cosmic consciousness that operate in the atomic realm, the realm of transformation, the realm of consciousness, and um, are what allow all transformations to succeed. No transformation can be completed without the helpers. There's helpers of emotions, helpers of, uh, you know, everything. <laughs> everything you can imagine, there's a helper for it, uh, more or less. If it's helpful, good thing, you know. There aren't evil helpers. You know, it's not a thing. <clears throat> Chaos. There is no such thing in the cosmos, because the cosmos, by its very definition, is order. Chaos is created by the collective ego through the introduction of words and abstract concepts that have no cosmic basis. Chaos characterizes the demonic sphere of consciousness. The idea of a primordial chaos from which order was created by man or by a god hand in man's image is part of the collective ego's myth that serves to justify the control of nature by humans. So there's no such thing as chaos, actually, except the belief that we may have of it. Do you see that? Do you see that? It's a, it can be a human projection, um, a false consciousness, um, which you know, has the power to affect our thoughts and our thinking. But in and of itself, chaos does not exist in the cosmos apart from humans, uh, which is rather profound. <laughs> there is no primordial chaos. So uh, belief systems that uh, propagate that view, um, you see what they're doing, they're introducing chaos themselves into reality uh, through those beliefs. <clears throat> Character, this word has no cosmic basis. It is used by the collective ego to appropriate the cosmic virtues every person is born with. The collective ego denies our cosmic virtues, such as kindness, modesty, loyalty to our inner truth by saying that we are born deficient. It then says that we have to, quote, develop character, meaning the development of abstract standards of kindness, modesty, loyalty, etc. Character is the sum total of a person's self images. Very interesting. Very interesting. Something to contemplate right there. And we all know that self images are the mainstay of the ego. You know, the ego is a collection of self-images that a person has about themselves, which, and the ego, of course, is this false consciousness, this false self that can start to live a life of its own in place of your true self, in place of who you really are. And that's what cosmic human design is all about, is, uh, you know, getting through the ego and back to your true original nature. Uh, to your true self, which is united with the cosmos, and which can partake of the cosmic blessings. Chi energy. 
there are different kinds of chi energy, which the sage has taught us to distinguish as follows. The life force that animates all of existence, okay? The will, which is the sum total of a person's animal or of a person's animal or person's or animal psychic energy. So we've got the life force, we've got the will, and we've got the electric energy that enables things outside the body to move. So three different kinds of chi energy. These three different kinds of chi energy belong to the cosmic consciousness and are made up of the myriad of helpers of the invisible world. All kinds of chi energy have a light aspect and a dark aspect, which complement each other. The word helpers reflects the fact that chi is not a mechanical energy and that the cosmos does not work as a system of mechanics, but operates as a system of interactive helping energies. The cosmos is primarily a feeling consciousness with most of its helpers operating through feelings. Everything in the cosmos is imbued with life force with the exception of crystallized forms, although they also have a specific kind of consciousness. Very interesting. The transformation of life force into visible life forms occurs in the sphere of the atom. With regard to humans, every person is born with a reservoir of life force in every body cell. This life force is part of his inner truth, which is also his feeling memory in the form of imprints or DNA of what cosmic harmony feels like. Under normal circumstances, the life force is constantly renewed in the atomic realm through the person's contact with his feelings and the totality of his senses. The life force brings cosmic nourishment to the person's whole being. It is felt as a caring and loving energy that makes him feel one with the cosmos. Another function of the life force is to heal illness and injuries. Its ability to do so, however, is often impeded by the slanders that have been put on humans' animal nature. Because the cosmos does not entertain any relationship with the ego in a person, the only way for the ego to exist is to steal that person's life force. Various hexagrams describe how this is done in the same way a parasite lives off its host. And this is very interesting. See in particular, in particular the following hexagrams in this order. 23, splitting apart. 36, darkening of the light. 26, the taming power of the great. Nine, the taming power of the small. 33, retreating, hiding. 34, using power. One, the cosmic consciousness. And two, nature. For a development of, uh, of the ego. That's uh, the development of the, of the ego. Those hexagrams there show the progression. If not stopped in its activities, the ego will destroy its host, the person's true nature. The main cause that keeps a person locked in the grip of the ego is guilt. Guilt is an invention of the collective ego for the one purpose only, to gain access to cosmic energy via a person's feelings of guilt. Wow. Wow. The will, which is the sum of a person's or animal psychic energy, is located in the nerves in the back of the neck. Under healthy conditions, the will is aligned with all his inner senses. When the senses perceive a situation as harmonious, it means that the situation is under the protection of the cosmic harmonics and receives the coordinated support of the cosmic helpers. This is felt as a strong pull to follow what feels harmonious. When a situation feels discordant, the will is directed by the inner senses towards saying the inner no to what is discordant. The inner no transforms the split created by what is discordant in the realm of the atom, thus returning the situation to harmony. This situation is described in Hexagram 23, splitting apart line six, where the chi energy as will, after having been split apart by mistaken ideas, has been transformed and is therefore able to carry the true self forward on the path of his destiny. When, however, the will has been harnessed by the ego, see hexagram, see page 253, hexagram 28, the preponderance of the great, it is employed to suppress the person's true nature and deprive him of his life force. Chi energy as the electric energy that enables things outside the body to move is a product of the interaction between the cosmic helpers and the helpers of nature. It can be pictured as an energy circuit that is constantly self-renewing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I have more terms coming. There's a couple of pages of this and I hope you guys find this interesting. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe right there and I'll see you guys in the next one.